So I'm here today um, in this wonderful house in uh, South Carolina with uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Judy Wood. And uh, I think a lot of people will, will be interested in seeing this discussion. Uh, you might want to call it an interview, you might want to call it a discussion. Um, and I've had some questions which have come from Facebook and um, from emails, a couple of emails. So I'm gonna try and go through some of those. Don't have time to get through, get through them all. Um, and there's some of the questions that we get repeated, don't we? Quite similar questions, so people can watch the other interviews and so forth to, to go through some of those. Mm -hmm. They don't get their answer today. They, I'm sorry, they're just going to have to study what's out there. To read the book. And, re and read the book, and we'll talk about the book in a minute, just briefly. Um, so, Dr. Judy Wood, for those that don't know her, has become uh, somewhat well-known now because um, of what you saw that many people didn't see um, on 9-11. And I was one of those people that didn't see, and you did. And so, you know, we've talked, I know you've talked about that in many interviews before, but I think I wanted to just m mention how, for example, some of the key things that stood out to me from your description of what happened uh, then, which is that you saw exactly what happened and you saw through the, these, these false stories which were out, coming out straight away, didn't you? Because you just saw, you looked at the events and you saw that this building came apart. The buildings were coming, coming Never apart. Never saw anything like that before. And, and, and you thought, what the heck is going on? You, you, you said you thought it was like a War of the Worlds thing, didn't you, that, mm -hmm. uh, that was happening, that it was, that it was being replayed uh, on all the channels, the same footage, wasn't it? And so you're thinking, uh, is it just me? And then we were talking earlier today, weren't we? Um, and uh, and uh, that was, uh, um, you know, you described how you felt... Uh, that uh, you were, you know, it was, it was the invasion of the body snatchers where you were the only one, you were the one that had gone insane and everyone else was... was or the know, other way around. Yeah, you know, or the other way around. And needed to sort out that difference. Right, right. And you said, I know you said many times that when your eyes and your ears disagree, you tend to shut out your ears, don't you? Mm -hmm. um, Another thing, they, they told us it was a collapse. And I remember thinking, now, what does collapse look like? Right. No, it doesn't look like that. And I remember you saying in the lectures, you know, the, the, particularly I think it was the BEM lecture, you said this, you know, collapse pile, Osama bin Laden, terrorism. Those were put out straight away. Yes. And so that was what's called, we were talking about this with Matt as well, um, anchoring. They anchor these concepts into the, uh, event, you know, the what's happening in front of you. So you, you associate it with that and then, you, you know, you, you, you stop questioning. Um, and I know, we, you know you've covered that on some interviews before. Um, so what I also want to talk about is, people might be wondering why I'm here in South Carolina. Um, we're going to jump in tracks a bit, but you know, it's okay. It's meant to be sort of fairly informal. And uh, because I, 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 the reason why I'm in South Carolina is, is my fault really, isn't it? Because I told this story to you about what's well, a couple of years ago now, wasn't that? Mm -hmm. um, in that um, in 1999, uh, I saw total solar eclipse in Great Britain in a, in a place called Cornwall, which is on the southwest tip of England. And it's some peculiar things about that because it was August uh, the 11th, 1999, when this eclipse took place, total solar eclipse. We just saw it, but it was the time of the eclipse then was 11.11 11, uh, in the morning which is rather unusual uh, because of what came later in my 11, life. 11, on the 11th. On the 11th of August, yeah, 1999, which is kind of sort of like an 11 number two. Um, and so I was thinking one day whilst standing in the shower that um, I'd known that eclipses go in 18-year cycles. The, sun, the moon's orbit has an 18-year cycle called the Saros. And I thought, oh, I wonder where the, uh, there must be a solar, solar eclipse in August or July or June or something. Uh, 2017, because that's 18 years after 1999. So I thought, well, let's go and have a look then. So I went, got dressed, went on the internet, put in 2017, total solar eclipse, and what happened? Uh, I think you, you contacted me and said, well, right. you know, to, right. go look at this. And I looked at it and went, oh my gosh, it's dead center over my house. <laughs> and it was right over your house, wasn't it? Yeah. And then we had another bizarre thing, because our friends here who've uh, kindly... Um, uh, organized this place that we're staying here, this beautiful house um, uh, near Williamston. 
and uh, they, they, they booked this, you know, with the intent of getting us together, didn't they? And oh, that was part of the plan. Yeah. And this is also right in the path, centre line yeah. of totality, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, over this house and my house. Yeah, it's like a straight line of totality, isn't it? In better yet, the, the cow pasture out there. Yeah, and we've got a wonderful view. I'll put, put some pictures into the video of some of the shots I've taken around totally here. But it was totally dark now. The cows started uh, mooing and running for the, the trees. It was, it was fantastic, wasn't it? Because we were yeah. also worried we were going to get clouded out because of the, some of the clouds that came in. We've got an absolutely mm -hmm. perfect view. I'll put some of the pictures that I took into the video. And we really felt absolutely privileged, didn't we, to, to be here and uh, experience this. And also, right before the total darkness, all of the, the gnats come out and mosquitoes and bugs for about a minute. And then when it was totally dark, they went to sleep. And then when the sun starts peeking out the other side, they came back for about one, one hour of, uh, I mean, one, one minute of dawn in the morning, kind of, yeah, and then they yeah. go away. And also, the birds quit chirping. And I mean, we're also what I want to sort of lead into, that this, this story of the eclipse is, is interlinked with how we came to get to know each other, isn't it? And so I'll, I've told that story a number of times in that you'd started to look, and I've already started telling the story in the first minutes, that you'd started to look at 9-11 pretty much on September the 11th itself, or even the 12th or something, you on the 11th, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, so a lot of people have tried to say, I want to clear some of these things up which you and I have spoken about before. Oh, this, this Dr. Judy, Judy we didn't, she wrote this book in 2010 and that's when she came on to 9-11 after all these other people had, you know, been saying things and doing books and stuff. That's nonsense, isn't it? Because you were actually posting stuff. I know you were posting stuff in 2004 and at that, that, that time that was when you'd said you felt that nothing was being done the grown-ups, as you said, weren't going to take care of it. And somebody needed to. And somebody needed to. So you took that decision, essentially, and almost literally to put your life on the line. Right. And, and my career was for sure, you know, it was one and way that, to take yeah, it. Yeah, that essentially sort of came about later, didn't it? And kind of, um, you know, that, that didn't, didn't, didn't go well from there. Um, and and then then you know that, that, so you're on record really from on the internet. I think correct me if I'm wrong. You started posting stuff on Jane Doe. Was it 2004? Yeah. And I know yeah. you'd been discussing it privately with a few people for, yeah. for the years before that, hadn't you? And you'd you'd set up this Jane Doe page to just put some to pictures share on. Stuff yeah, to somebody. share stuff. I didn't then, email it. Right, you didn't have to email it and stuff. Um, now we d I don't know what the state of that site is now. Have you looked at it recently? Is it I've, you know we don't know if it's still going or whether that tripod thing has closed down. Mm -hmm. or but also in 2007, uh, early 2007, it submitted the the uh, request for corrections. Yeah, and, we'll, we'll come on. Yeah, and, we'll talk about that a little yeah. bit as well. Yeah, but because so the pa path was you did the Jane Doe site and then we, we did this 9/11 scholars uh, scholars for 9/11 Truth got set up by Fetzer and Jones, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, after we, that. Yeah, so that was after the, the Jane Doe stuff. Mm -hmm. That was actually about a, at least. And a, after I had met Dave Ray Griffin. Yeah, so and you told that story. He met you at a uh, conference, didn't he? Was it a conference? Well, he was speaking, and I went there to DC. It was the 23rd of September, uh, 2005, and I went up to him afterwards and said. You know, we really need to to uh, get some scholars together, didn't you? Yeah, get some academics yeah, get together. Yeah, academics together. Said you know, safety in numbers. Mm. And he he, I gave him my my faculty card, and he started tucking away in his pocket. He said, "This made my whole trip worth it." Right. Wow, I felt good. He yeah. was going to email me as soon as he got back. He didn't email me. Then they set up this scholars for 9/11 truth bait. Right. And so that's I got involved in in December 2005 when Jones. Was and rounding fetch, people yeah, up. Yeah, he was rounding, but exactly, he was rounding people up, and I didn't realize this at the time. I've told this story several times on the interviews that I've done. And, um, and so that took us into 2006. They had you basically running in circles once this scholars group got going, and Fetzer had yeah. you doing the website and things. And well, first I emailed uh, Stephen Jones because he was doing this aluminum doesn't glow business. And I, right, right. It's so silly. I mean, that's a, you know, anybody mm -hmm. would, would know that. Um, that that's not true. It's a it's a temperature thing, not a material thing. Thing, mm. and you're like, what's wrong with this picture? This doesn't make sense. How could a professional? Is, is he having a senior moment? I mean, right. What's going on? Right. And then from my email to him, he blocked out some things, and he he presented the next day at this meeting, you know, this presentation he was given. 
He said he didn't disclose who I was, but he... He essentially he, did because... But he said Jane Doe, yeah, and then yeah. also he said um, a female professor... At Clemson. Yeah, in mechanical engineering. engineering department at Clemson. Mm, the only how female many faculty member. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how many of those are there? Let's see, right. mm, uh, one? Yeah, so people could easily work that out. And immediately my department chair and my dean started getting emails from trolls, nasty stuff, and it was very disruptive, Yeah. and that was the intent. Yeah, that's it. So they wanted to shut you down pretty much yeah. from uh, when you, when they realized you were willing to speak out. Yeah. Um, so, that, so then that you got involved in the scholars group, and then I was involved in the scholars group, and then... Well, if I, there was somebody who... Um, who was doing the website? Who who blamed uh, blamed me for my student's death? And Fetzer told him to get lost. And Fetzer said, and Fetzer said "No, I have no." And finally, I don't know how to do websites, but you know, as a team member, you know, you were I'm trying to just player. help out with yeah, the group effort. I, I would I would try to figure out something until you got somebody. Mm, yeah, yeah, quit yeah. looking. Uh, exactly. Because uh, now you have her roped in and have her run around mm. circles. Because I mean, that was a huge tragedy, and it was. Um, Early 2006, it was March or April that Michael Zabur was killed? Um, uh, March. March, wasn't it? And that, th March 18th. I yeah, think. I mean, that, that was horrible. Uh, and, and people seem to, some people seem to have forgotten about that. But um, you, it was rather traumatic. And yes, to have it yes. just shoveled off to the side and ignored. And then I got that call from Morgan Reynolds, who called me. Cause he Okay, so we're going again. Um, so I'd, uh, I'll just go back and talk about my affidavit. So I'd spoken to uh, Jerry Leapart and he'd suggested that I submit an affidavit or I'd suggested him that, you know, I asked him could I, I can't remember which way around it was. And um, because of my involvement with the research and so forth and I had some knowledge um, because at that point, you know, we'd also established the relevance of the Hutchinson effect and of course, you and I had been speaking to John, you know, over time, hadn't we? You spent mm -hmm. some time with him, um, and you got to know him a little bit. You got to went to see his lab, didn't you? And you saw the equipment he had up in um, New Westminster near Vancouver. Um, I'd spoken to him on the phone a couple of times, and I wrote out his affidavit, which is all on your website, isn't it? All the affidavits mm -hmm. that we put in are there, so that's all on record, and you've got, got the court stamps and everything, hasn't it? So that all went into the Southern District of New York over the time period from uh, April 2007 and we were submitting documents I think when did the document submission talk so there were various appeals well, it, and then we had to, didn't we right you, you, the original submission was in April 2007 and then when the other side starts uh, filing stuff we can yep. file, then file more stuff and that that <coughs> whole process went on until about I think a year. yeah about a year and then we had the appeal didn't we yep and that that was uh, in they had a court hearing in June 2009, Something was it? Something like for, that, yeah. Uh, in, and they had an eight-minute hearing. Yeah, yeah, you can't do much in eight no, minutes. No, no, and that was when they had 11 judges, was it? Three. In, oh, it was three, okay. Three. There's three judges. And, yeah. um, that was one when one of them said, you all have a death wish or yeah, something. Yeah, do you all have a death wish? Yeah, As yeah. Jerry had heard him say. Yeah, um, yeah. Then, and there was two people other than me and Jerry, you know. Two, two supporters. Yes, so when we drove there. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, so, yeah. So hardly anybody turned up. In I tried to publicise that uh, court case in the 9/11 groups that I was part of, and they wouldn't talk about if it. If we had a thousand people in the street out out front, you would have had something different happening. Uh, exactly, exactly. But they really, uh, the the irony of it was that there was a regular news website, albeit not a very well known one featured my press release about the court case, whereas the 9-11 Truth Movement website tried to brush it to one side. Well, actually, you were banned from the group if you talked about it. Yes, several yeah, people banned yeah, from the group. Yeah, exactly. And we found that out later, going back to the architects and engineers group. That's what happened. If they brought yeah. up your name, your research, the court case. Well, I knew about it at the time. There was yeah. a couple of people who had contacted me about that. Right, right. But this, this process went on afterwards as well, yep. didn't it? But yep. it, it was, yeah, as you say, it was going on during uh, your court case and then all the time after that and as, as we said earlier had guidelines not to admit people to the group that were right. familiar with your research or mentioned it and being there was an ongoing court case i couldn't advertise i couldn't talk about it no 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 and so uh, i could only talk about once the case ended which was it what we then submitted to the supreme court well yep. first yeah the court of appeals uh said yeah the law applies to this case but we're ignoring the law in order 
to uh, uh, dismiss the case. Exactly. That, that was respectful. That. Yes, indeed. And then we went to the Supreme Court so we can say we did, did it all. And the Supreme Court doesn't have to hear the case. Yes. Only if they feel like it. Yeah. Yes. For so whatever reason. Yeah. And they decide they didn't feel like it and announced that. And this is an important thing to note. Okay. In the spring of 2010, or February 2010, it was the, I think it was January 22nd where they announced that they weren't going to hear the case. And uh, early February 2010, Richard Gage, Stephen Jones, and so forth announced a, uh, a worldwide press conference. And every city, somebody was supposed to rent out a hotel room, um, a conference center kind of room for a press conference and stand in front of the microphones in case the press had any questions. That limited me from talking about it. Yes, yeah. Because it would be shut down immediately. That was out amazing. And I bet you most people out there don't realize why they did this thing. Yeah, I mean, I, and I remember you mentioned this quite recently to me, even though it's a, happened, uh, uh, you know, in 2010, which is seven years ago now. Yeah. Uh, and I, I didn't really appreciate that until you reminded me of that. I don't even remember that. So. And at that... Um, uh, event, um, Stephen Jones, Richard Gage, Dave Ray Griffin, and all joined in uh, San Francisco for their group meeting in a hotel. And Stephen Jones had opened his mouth about energy weapons having done the earthquake in, I think, Haiti. Right. And everyone says, oh, he's behind the eight ball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And realizing energy weapons exist. But, um, yeah, it was interesting how easily. And then right at that same time, remember this ABC, never before seen yes, yes, images? Yes, yes, Those yes. are all the images that had been on my website like all this for, time. Yeah, for at least six years, well, about six years, in fact, at that now, point. Now, let's look at why, what would have happened if they hadn't done that. I could have released all these images and started talking about my court case, and the shock and awe would have hit everybody. Or hit more people, certainly. Yeah, and like, oh my gosh, we haven't seen these before. But the way it was covered was never before seen, even Fetzer played that game. Yes. And said, never yes. before seen images. One of those images was on the cover of his 2007. Yeah. But uh, I remember you saying yeah. that now, yeah, yeah. His yeah. DVD from the... Uh, his the uh, yeah, what's his conversion and what's not conference, right. the model up, super model yeah. up conference that was done in 2007. Right. Which uh, was, was at least useful for getting your evidence on record with the videos that we did oh, with you. There's something else I'd like to mention mm -hmm. that, you know, Fetzer likes to say, oh, she, does, she hasn't thought about this new evidence we have about uh, the dust samples. I presented at the 2007 Fetzer's conference. Yes. Wasn't he paying yeah. attention? Yeah, exactly, exactly. He organized a conference and then wasn't paying attention. Right. You know, and then so. later, you know, with three or four years later, he's saying that this is new information that Judy can't handle. <laughs> Right, right. So, you know, after that, it was really when the book sort of started to be an well, idea, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to get the, the key chain. Remember, you have to be the first. Yes, yes. So I first submitted the um, request for correction. That qualified me to file the... the um, Key Tam case. Yes, yes. And yes. then was able to file the Key Tam case. Okay, well, that was cooking. Then I started working on the book. Right, okay. So you started the book essentially <coughs> in around about 2008 then because you got to the point where you got right. the evidence into some kind of organizational format and so you started to build on that and, right. and marshal it a bit more and so forth. Right, organize it better. Yeah, it, organize it better. The website and all was just hurried together. And uh, I wonder if you want, shall we tell the story about the certain person that got involved sometimes after that? Maybe, I, th maybe I, think it's it's, I think it's a time we should tell that story because of what's happened recently. So, um, so basically, you'd, you know, you'd start to do the book. You were thinking about getting the book published. I know you'd also previously discussed with doing it with Morgan, hadn't you, I think? You'd, you'd yeah, talked and, about and it. Yeah, and Morgan um, what, didn't have that long of attention span. Like when I first put up the mm -hmm. first article, he mm -hmm. was off in a motorcycle ride, but he's retired. Yeah. He's enjoying yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. And I felt internally a, a sense of nervousness, like I need yes, to get this out done there. For now, yeah. And I was taught that, yeah, dead people keep secrets. I need, I, I need to get my secret out yeah. there. So essentially, you know, you were working with Morgan and, you know, felt that would only take you both so far at that point. Right. And, and, and so you <clears> felt <throat> you had to go further from there in your own, under your own steam and so forth and in your own time and so forth. And, and then I started putting it all together. And okay, but I have no idea who, who would publish such a book, how to find a publisher, and right, how to right. go about this. And, and, and I, of course, was doing stuff as well. I'd, I'd started to put together, well, I'd done all the articles, you know, the Greg Jenkins article on new 9-11 yeah. hijackers, 
and I've done one about Jones and that thing in 2007. So I'd essentially been doing something similar to you in one sense. You were looking at getting all the evidence organised for the destruction the of the World evidence. Trade Center, your yeah, physical evidence, scientific forensic evidence. And uh, I was looking at getting all the evidence about the cover up and how that was working. I was looking at getting that. All and also, together. let's mention Russ Gerst. He played a big part. Absolutely, in this too. he does, and he still does to this day. Yes, Russ, very, uh, I, I wouldn't be able to. Do yeah, and I mean, the fact him. if it wasn't for Russ, but, but you know, the book would probably be it might be available, but it wouldn't it'd be. be, yeah, it'd be he's very organized it so well, hasn't he? You know, of how to do it. Yeah, and, and, yeah. Uh, when to reorder new ones and. Yeah, I mean, he's re essentially been a publishing company all by himself, really, yeah. hasn't he? In, in it's, essence. It's, God's gift. You know, to yeah, us. yeah, absolutely. And he's sorted out all the Amazon stuff and, and everything. So we should should absolutely give him a big shout uh, how out. How I first um, got a hold of him, that was back in 2006. There was a, a friend that I had who'd also been communicating with him. And he had written a letter to the editor in his local newspaper uh, about thermite. And this friend of mine had sent it to me to proofread. And I went, wait a minute, hold the horses. And then I noticed there's a phone number down there and I called it up. And Russ answered. And I told him, and he, he said later he realized, wait a minute, I need to think for myself. Yes. Is it thermite, yeah. or is this person who's telling me thermite is bogus? And he thought it out and sorted it out himself. And, and that, of course, l later on, we can just throw in here that that led to some dialogue with Jeff Tecklenburg, didn't it? The, yes, the guy, uh, the who, guy at the paper. Was that the same guy? Yeah, the newspaper right, guy. Yeah, and he, he did run some articles, didn't he? And he's one of the few people that's actually tried to yes. do something with yes. the evidence that you've put together. And I think Je uh, Russ had written an article about where did the towers go. I can't remember. It's yes. going back a few years now, isn't yes. it? Because, I mean, this is it. We're going back to some things which are 10 years old now, aren't we, and older. very few people are aware of, too. And, and so we're still, uh, you know, we're, we're, this is looking back in history for us as well. And we're now approaching the 16th anniversary of the events. So, uh, you know, it's... Uh, and Russ wasn't sure how to... I was wanting yeah. to do the book with Russ, and he did, wasn't sure where to go. No, no, and, and I wasn't either. Yeah, I mean, and who do you go to to publish such a thing? And we talked about this, and I, I, a name came up, didn't we? Because I'd, I'd been listening to people like Richard Hoagland. Well, I, I ran and, into something, and, uh, and then I mentioned this name to you, and I went ahead and wrote to this person. They wrote back and wanted to uh, have me uh, communicate with Richard Hoagland. And you would then sent that, that audio clip about what that Richard Hoagland was That's talking right. about. That's uh, right. That's right. Richard Hoagland was basically doing the Bin Laden story on George yeah. Nouri, and that was what About uh, solar energy. We have the sun. And we have the sun. Yeah, we don't need Bin Laden's oil, you know, so... 9-11 uh, yeah, was for nothing. Yeah, it was for nothing, you know. And, and he was associated with another person and um, who'd written various books, which we later found out were essentially... Um, a fair bit of storytelling, really. There's some mm -hmm. interesting sort of stuff in there. And I was, I'm still interested in a lot of the stuff that he writes about and those topics. But essentially, you know, we found him to be untrustworthy, didn't we, because of what he started doing. I and mean, we're not going to go into the, all, all the details. Yeah. But basically, the process was you wanted to get the book published. You'd pretty much got everything you needed together, hadn't you? You needed editing, didn't you? Well, yeah, didn't need yeah. editing, you know right. what I mean? I, I, w I needed somebody to tell you, like, who can publish a book yeah. and how do you go about that? And, right, right, and right. I, I wouldn't hurt to have somebody look it over, but I contact this person because they've written sort of like uh, hypothetical scenarios about different things and I knew they could they could handle this. And, the, and this character is uh, Joseph P. Farrell who's yeah. written various books and the peculiar thing was and we started to tell we agreed that we would tell this story now I wrote a little bit about this in in the, the Richard Hoagland is Richard Hoagland on a dark mission uh, people can read that article on my website which was written in 2011 or maybe even before I can't even remember the date of it and I haven't got it to hand and um, Hoagland and uh, Farrell were publishing through a company called Feral House, weren't they? A publisher called Feral House. Adam Parfrey runs that. And I tell some of that story that basically, I'm just jumping if my memory is incorrect, Dr. Wood, that uh, you'd essentially got this book, you planned this book, you pretty much knew what you wanted in it. You, yeah, you it pretty was, much you got the images. It was rough around the edges. It might have been too yeah, many images yeah. or whatever. Yeah, and I would, yeah. And, and I, would, I would listen to some feedback from him or some criticism, and he wanted me right. to take out like the Hutchison chapter, like, huh? Right, And right. he wanted to take out a whole bunch of images, and, huh? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and uh, it became worse and worse and worse, didn't it? And it started off being a something, the, the, the initial proposal. But he, I trusted him. And yeah, he of course. He had me out his hand. It's a, to going back a little step, he, the initial proposal, I think, was for a 330-page book or a 300-page book with colour inserts in the middle. 
No, we that, hadn't discussed that. Oh, was that not? Oh, maybe it wasn't I discussed. That turned into it later. Ah, okay. So, but, was, but okay. So that wasn't discussed initially. But at some point, you made a sort of rough outline that it was going to be a three hundred or odd page book with color photos. Is that um, right? Well, it was going to be. It had to be color Tell photos. I said that from the start. And okay, that was going to be the case. And I think two hundred forty pages or or something was talked about. Or that's what they had come back to say. No, I need to do it in one book. Mm, if mm, you break mm, it mm, up, mm. you know, I, if I wanted to make money, I'd break each chapter. Each chapter makes the case by itself. Mm, mm. But then you'd have, well, she didn't talk about this, she didn't talk about that. So I wanted the whole story in one volume. And the reason why it's hardback is for structural... Uh, stra Integrity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a, a paperback would fall apart. Yeah, yeah. So being a hardback book and it's good quality, so for one, one thing, and Parfait refused to publish that. He wanted yeah. to do it in black and white on, on newsprint paper. And um, so basically, it. yeah, it was going to be inadequate, totally inadequate. The the, the mm -hmm. format they eventually said that you had to use to get it published by them was going to be no good. And, and chop out this chapter yeah. and take chop out that everything chapter. out. So they basically were trying to water it down, dilute it, mm -hmm. make it look trashy, cheap, uh, and and would have had next to no impact. But every, anyone who's picked up the Where Did the Towers Go book will know that it's what an impact it has. But it in in Farrell's behalf, uh, if you're into making money, you want to publish a cheap book and make money off it. And the, the reason, uh, yeah, absolutely. And the reason why I was keen to get this on record was because of what he's been doing quite recently. A couple of months ago, he did an interview uh, where he's talking about his work. Uh, he came, comes home from work. He says he worked in a casino. And he, he came home. He had a friend staying with him. And the, the news was on. He was just about to go to bed. I, I'm hearing from the living room, oh, my God, oh, my God, over and over again. And so I finally got up, put on my bathrobe, and came into the living room and said, what in the name of sense is going on? He pointed to the television screen, and, and I looked. And just as I looked, you know, the, the North Tower of, of the World Trade Center was on fire. And um, just, just as I looked, the, the uh, second tower was struck, the South Tower was struck. And immediately, I, I thought, you know, we're under attack. So I stayed up and, and watched the towers come down. And I began to notice uh, two things. Number one, the meme was, was already being put out by the, by the, what I like to call the lame street media. Uh, that, you know, was there a possibility that the, the fires could so weaken the structures that they'd come down? And, of course, I thought that's nonsense, you know. Uh, because for one thing, you know, you were looking at you were looking at black smoke coming out of them. The fires were, in other words, they were cool fires. They weren't they weren't oxygen rich fires. So I thought immediately, well, that's nonsense. So there's something going on here. And then the towers came down, and I deliberately made myself count. You know, I, I used my hands to kind of physically count. Um, and I thought, gee, that's near, that's near free fall speed. So this, this is not a conventional collapse. This is some sort of, uh, controlled demolition. And the way it looked to me, Tim, uh, watching, literally kind of watching the towers kind of be peeled like a banana. I thought this is, this is not a conventional controlled demolition. There may be some sort of exotic technology at work here. Here's Tower 1 coming apart, and it peels away like peeling a banana, and left with these little, little spires sticking up. That's about 700 feet tall. It's got to be pretty strong to be standing unsupported that tall. The story changed night shift, over night time. I, I never heard about the right, casino right. before. Yeah, well, well I think he said, yeah, that's what he said. And um, so he then says he's watching the events on TV with his friend there, and he says he's watching the events happen in New York and the towers being destroyed. And this is on the day, you know, this is not after the events. And he said he saw the buildings peeling like a banana. You know? Yeah, all the various statements from my yeah. book. He had my manuscript. Exactly, so he had that manuscript. And so he was basically using, pretend, he was saying that he was using the language that you've used. And that even then, in that context, he wasn't being quite accurate because... You actually specifically, correct me if I'm wrong, describe the spire, the so-called spire. The yeah, there's, a, there's a banana peeling image. Of it. it looks like, yeah, peeling banana. And that's one of the key pieces of evidence which shows that, that the steel was turning to dust. And if 
because if you see it uh, abruptly peeling off, a piece coming off from it, you're not seeing the thing disintegrating. It's it's still crisp around yeah. that one piece yeah. that's still standing. Yeah. There's no haze of dust around it. So 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 you know that's <laughs> one of the key things, and you know the people that are not familiar, as you said. The buildings, they did not burn up, they did not slam to the ground, they, mostly, they mostly turned to dust in midair. That's that's what happened to the towers. If you want to get it down to a, to a compact, succinct description, that's it basically. And actually, that statement was in the um, uh, Supreme Court thing. That's, that, right, great, to, great. Because you only have so many words in that. Yeah. that and that's it. You put thing. that into a court, court document because yep. you knew you could prove that's what happened. Yep. No question. And, and, that, and that's that's the whole point. That's why we're so firm on this, and we don't talk about theories. We don't want to talk about theories. We you don't take a, a court case no. based on theories or hypotheticals. No. no. But the, 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 then other people, what we've noticed as well, m number of times, quite a few well-meaning people approach you. Sometimes they approach me and say, "Oh, I've got this theory that I want to add on to Judy Wood's theory," you know, and they're perfectly free to do that if they wish we we can't stop them doing that it's you know free speech yeah. everywhere and all of that but it's often very unhelpful to do that to add speculation to something it isn't speculative because then people then I think it's all speculative correct correct so that's why you know if 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 somebody writes to me with that sort of uh, attitude I, I can be quite give them short shrift to use an expression I said look this isn't a theory this is the evidence that's and as you said you know know what you know uh, yeah. Know uh, what it is that you know that you know that you know, yeah. and know that you don't know anything. No. The rest. And don't confuse and don't, the two. Right. Yeah. And don't yeah. fill in the gap. And don't try and fill in the gaps. So that's you've said that many times, and it still applies. Uh, and what we were saying earlier on about where did the towers go as the book mm -hmm. is it's a course in critical thinking as much as about being a book to, about 9/11. Show that discipline and sort of teach that discipline because that is something that is so lost in our culture. People think that really confuse guesses and theories and hypotheticals with facts. And to really gain some discipline in separating those things, because once you separate those things and know what it is that you know that you know, and not fill in that other, if you start filling in things with guesswork, you're biasing your observations. Right. Like, for example, why I talked about fumes. That's yeah, a generic yeah. term. If you say smoke, you're already assuming in, in fire, fire yeah. is the source. Uh, yeah, and there's m many examples of that in the book. So, and it's a good, often, as you said, I think, if you read the book, when you finish reading front it, read to it. Front to the back. Yeah, yeah read it. Yeah. So you read it in the order, front to back, straight through. And don't skip any parts. Don't skip to the middle. Don't go uh, quote mining. Don't go quote mining. Don't go picture browsing, you know. Mm -hmm. Study it all. And then when you've, when you've studied it all, go back to the beginning and study it again. Yep. You know. Three times is usually the, uh, yeah. Yeah. the, the popular number of times. Because you fir first time through, you... You sort of get the picture. Second time through, you see the details, like the various footnotes and um, uh, yes, indeed things like that that quotes quoted things from other sources. And, it, and then third time, it's solidified. It's truly an amazing compendium as well, and um, you know, so so people should should try and uh, work get beg, steal, or borrow a copy and, and work through it, uh, you know, as best they can. Um, some people say it's as technical parts, but there are many non-technical parts as well. The, you can step right. around the equations. The equations are there for who Those, want equations. Yeah, for people that understand that and can, you know feel comfortable or feel dealing the need with that. Feel the need for them indeed. So so yeah. So essentially, the book was was published in uh, it was late. Uh, well, it was it was ready in two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. Uh, when uh, uh, Farrell went weird. Um, I said, okay, I got to figure out how to do this on my own. Contacted somebody else, but what I'd like to say about the, the another thing about the book, and you've helped me verbalize well, yeah. that my teaching style is to get the the reader to think. Why well, I call it a course in critical thinking mm -hmm. to get the reader to process the information. Don't spoon feed them, but you ask them enough questions and you give them the data to look at, and they can figure it out. So my book covers what happened as well as how it happened. That's right. So, so the, the how is there, but it's done in a way which is sort of kind of subtle and not spoon feeding you. So you show the how in the form of things like, for example, the, tornadoes. The you direct know. evidence. And yeah. then I show parallel evidence. Yeah. Yeah. So and then it's, you can see on one side, one set of evidence and the other side, the other set of evidence and anybody. And all that is evidence. Exactly. So it's not, non, no theories, you know, we've said that many times, the irrefutable film that Adam Dwyer so uh, marvellously made uh, a couple of years ago, which has, uh, I think, turned a few heads. I think he's 
was pretty successful in what he set out to do in that film. He was film. an engineer, he just he happened was, upon yeah, the book and yeah. went, whoa. And, and, and he, he, he did a very good job because he edited all the clips down. It took him over a year, I think, to make that film. So again, and well, this has been the work. theme that people that have come to this information and taking it forward. We don't have a group, do we? We don't run architects and engineers. Yeah, so we don't, we don't run a group or anything particularly. And that brings me on to another thing I wanted to mention, which will bring us on to the final part of this. Um, we don't really run a group. We don't, have, we don't take in a million dollars in 18 months of funds like architects and engineers do and go on 30-date world tours. If somebody is sincere and wants us to do a talk, either you or me, and we'll pay our expenses, you know, that's basically, all, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. all we need, you know. Um, and uh, the, the problem then is, is, is the getting people to come to those events, the advertising and the promotion. And, you know, when you book an event that's in a strange town and you've never booked an event before, it's often difficult to get people to come to those events. Just if it doesn't have a slick website. And, and you don't have a slick website and so forth, you know. But we, as far as we're concerned, the evidence is all there on our websites. Maybe like my website, it's okay, it's not that well organized. But we've both done books. If you want all the evidence, get the book. My book is free to download. Your book can be had for $25 plus shipping, you know, depending on where you are in the world. 25 pounds. Yeah, 25 pounds, sorry. And it's um, <coughs> uh, like 40. $40, isn't it? Including shipping, I think, isn't it? In, uh, um, some of the shipping is in addition to that. Yeah, sometimes. But, but anyway. that is at cost. Yeah, it's basically cost price, isn't it? Yeah, and if you look at it, you know, can you go to uh, a copy center and get 500 right. pages of glossy color, yeah, color, glossy yeah. color prints? Hardback. For, yeah, absolutely. You know, for, absolutely. It's 540 pages. 540 pages. So, but the, so the book. You know, those books are there, people can read them, we've done videos, it's all on the web. And you know. none of it has ever been refuted. No, no. And we, you know, again, if there are mistakes, we want to hear about mm -hmm. them. I certainly do, and people have made, I've made mistakes, and those have been corrected uh, as best I can. Um, but going on from there then, going back to, for example, we talked about having a group. Well, you know, you don't use Facebook, um, but there is a Facebook, there are actually three or four Facebook groups. Um, the one that I administer, has um, over 5,000 members, but to me that's almost a meaningless figure because there are only probably about 10, <laughs> or, 10 or 15 people that are active posters, um, and I could go down the list and name those, you know. Um, and um, we just, uh, that group is specifically focused around where did the towers go and the research you put together and the significance of that. We don't talk about the latest 9-11 document release, about these 28 pages of documents that, you know, we're not interested in that. You know, we're interested in the importance of the evidence which shows you that free energy technology exists. Uh, I'd like to put it in other terms is uh, what happened, my book's about evidence of what happened. Yes. And the evidence of what happened is evidence that a technology exists that can do what was done. That's, but that technology doesn't have to do what was done. It can do good things and that provide free energy. That's essentially our main motivation, isn't it? To yeah. show people that out of this you know, horrible set of events, horrible on so many levels, that there is a, a, a light at you know, a light that can come out of that, hopefully, to change Silver the world. Silver lighting of yeah, the yeah. cloud. And, and, you know, we, obviously you've written about Nikola Tesla in your book and other people, uh, such and, as John Hutchison. And Tesla is afraid to bring this out for fear it would be used for evil instead of good. Well, we don't have that fear anymore. We don't have that fear then anymore. Then they've done that. Because, yeah, already they've already happened. done it. And so, so um, really then, that's, that's the goal, isn't it, to reveal that. And that, of course, if people watch the Irrefutable film, that's what the, the theme that Adam so masterfully ex, you know, exposed in that film. Some people don't like the loud music, uh, but that's okay, turn the music down. Made. Yeah, that's just how it was made. But, and Adam did it himself. And, th and th what I wanted to say earlier on is that that's been the theme, that people are looking at your book or your website, or your interviews or whatever, and they're, the people that do it well say, yeah, I've got to do something with this. And then they'll say, look, I've done this, what do you think? And they'll make something and then give us uh, the opportunity to give them criticism on it. And the honest people will say, oh, you don't like that? Oh, sorry, I'll change it, let me fix it for you. 
and the ones that are not honest won't change it or will just say, oh, you're just being awkward. You know, you don't, you don't really care about what people, you know, do for you. They put space beams in it. <laughs> yeah, or they'll put some spin on it of their own spin. Yeah. And then, and you know, it's mine. Any, any, any advice that we want to give them to, 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 to fix it or make it more true to what the actual evidence shows you, they, they reject that. So there is, I've found there are two types of people that, that come forwards mm -hmm. in this. Um, so, so that's, that's a theme that's come out. Um, but also, the, the evidence of what happened, the evidence of how it happened, is in the book. And many like to say, oh, she didn't think of this gizmo or that gizmo or this gizmo. Cause they want to you know, play spin the dial and name that weapon. And that takes people away from what happened. The evidence is irrefutable. You can't argue with the evidence. You can argue with the names of, of you know, gizmos, but you can't argue with the evidence. Absolutely, yeah, and you can have all these debates about harp or whatever it is, and that 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 I wrote an article about that many years ago. You know, like, so anything it, that can do what was done is classified technology. Yeah, yeah. So we we as ordinary people don't have access to that, and we're no different. You mm -hmm. know, um, we've had various people contacting us claiming to know certain things. Quite but then often, why are they talking about it? Yeah. If they have a security clearance. Exactly. I mean, those that know <coughs> don't talk, and those that talk don't know. Bingo. That's 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 the the phrase that I've heard said many times, and that seems to be the. the, the uh, something else uh, of interest to point out is since my book has come out, there's been quite a few people contacting me, sometimes quietly saying you're spot on. Yeah, and this is this so this is people that have seen seen the events themselves, haven't they? And uh, yeah, or who know of this mm. this type of work. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but really, uh, that that's about as far as we could go because. They themselves are under threat because yeah. this group, whoever it is, this group is, as I've said, they have absolute power. Yep. They have absolute power, and if you go by the sign saying that power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Then my yeah. logic would be they are absolutely corrupt, and that's yeah. been that has been our experience, hasn't it, with people like Fetzer and Jones? I'd say they are absolutely corrupt. You know that, mm -hmm. that no, really, co no moral compass left. No moral compass left, and that that's what that's what I would say. Um, going back to the Facebook group, I did say that I was going to come and visit you and we were going to have this conversation. And um, so I did have a few uh, questions, um, some of which uh, I was able to go through with you. Uh, I'll see how this edits through. Um, and I've got a question here from Matteo. Two questions, actually. Um, and, were, were, and he's written, were the powder samples analysed, and if so, what emerged? That's the first question. I think that's easy to answer. We don't want to go into long explanations, because you do talk about the powder samples in your book, don't the, you? Or the, the, the dust, dust samples. samples. Yeah. Yep, they're in the book. So, so again, if you want to know about the dust samples, that's in the book. And, the, and whether there are biased samples or not biased samples. And you what cover all of that, don't yep. you? Yeah. So that's in the book. Uh, many people repeatedly ask, what the proof of powder steel, what, what is the answer? Well, I, you know, we know that what the answer to that is. Many answers to it. They're all in the book, but it's the videos show the actual steel turning to dust with the. You it know, doesn't go thud in the ground. It's not left in the ground below. Not left on the ground. It's effervescing well, on the, the way down. The seismic evidence shows the whole, all of the building dust turned to dust. Or, and, well, just all about of it, all. Just them. about all of it. So that means that the steel must have turned to dust as well, because the steel was part of the building. Yeah, you have a hundred thousand so, tons of steel. And you, you have like a jackhammer hitting, you know, on the ground. So that was that. That's, exaggeration. that's all in the videos as well as the book. Perhaps, mm -hmm. perhaps in some ways, clear it in the videos because you can actually see it happening. But you need the evidence in the book. Like that, that uh, Barbara Crowley video. Yes. With yeah. Building Seven dropping behind her when she's being interviewed, and the crowd's going, <gasps> and she, what, what, what happened? What, you know, she has no yeah. idea that a building just dropped behind that's her. That's right. That's right. Uh, and then another question from <coughs> Torley. Um, uh, could the system of directed energy used on 9-11 be as simple as a scrapyard elect electromagnet, a switch is thrown, and this cancels the electronic attractions between atoms? It's not quite that simple. Uh, but what I mean by directed energy is instructed energy. Energy is directed or instructed to do something differently than it normally does. And the examples of you know, parallel examples, parallel evidence of how that is done is in John Hutchison's work, it's in tornadoes, it's in a variety of hurricanes. There's a variety of examples we see even in nature. So it's not something that has never happened before. Right, right. 
and again, it's it, it isn't a simple process. If it was, uh, it, you know, we would be, would be able to place. reproduce it um, really easily. Yeah, really easily. But it, but uh, you know, again, look at cold fusion research. Uh, we have had some developments with uh, this chap we were speaking to the other day, which will hopefully become clear in the fullness of time. Um, that in other words, I think there's some developments just as we're near the time of recording this that uh, are making the cold fusion link even stronger than it already was, I think. Or just so coming up with just ver uh, validating the evidence. Validating the evidence, exactly. <coughs> um, and, and, and just doing more parallel experiments, providing more parallel, eh, providing more parallel evidence. Exactly. Um, and next question is, um, so that was from Torley. Uh, this one is from... I'd like to also add about the dust samples. It's even in my book, as well as what I presented in 2007 at, at uh, Philosopher Professors Conference. Absolutely. And this one's from Jesse Delardio. How has investigating 9-11 changed Dr. Wood's worldview paradigm? So how has it changed your worldview? I thought worldview? more people were, were honest, and, yeah. or honest with themselves. And I didn't realize how many people don't see what's in front of them. It's been a real. That's but, but, been, yeah, believe what they're told instead of seeing what's in front of them, like my colleagues. So I mean, I think you know we've talked about this a bit, haven't we? Well, we've talked about this a lot, haven't we? How it's changed our worldview. And yeah, you said with yeah. your colleagues that was a big wake-up thing, wasn't it? It, it was uh, the scariest day of my life. Mm -hmm. like, the invasion of the body snatchers. Yeah, yeah. Because so these we, are honest people, but they couldn't get outside of what they're being told. They just were following in line, like uh, the Ash and Form experiment shows. Yeah. And, and, and it is so difficult for people to take on board the, the enormity of this, and they just sometimes, sometimes completely shut down. Because it destroys their worldview. Yeah, it completely destroys it. You have to be able to respect evidence and value looking at evidence and seeing what the evidence says, rather than any meeting, mighty mill and, and spin the dial on these answers, predetermined and answers, like, like uh, multiple choice questions. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> uh, and another question, uh, Dr. Wood has described 9-11 as an attack on human consciousness for myself, 9-11 has been an expansion of consciousness which led me to seek out the truth. Can Dr. Wood extrapolate on the idea that while 9-11 has been damaging to, the, to human consciousness, it has also had the opposite effect on others? Like we were just discussing, mm. that, that uh, I had no idea that most other people don't see evidence and see what's really there. Instead, they're pre-programmed to any, many, many, most. It's got to be one of these three things. And they don't look at what the evidence is saying. They look at what the choices are for the answer, like any uh, multiple choice test. Mm -hmm. it, the, I guarantee you, multiple choice tests aren't going to have this answer on them. Absolutely. And you have to be able to see that, and very few people can. So, so and I, that's been my experience as well. Um, and uh, it, it, so, you, you know, we've had very negative uh, attacks by people, and then some people have said that it's changed their life for the better, you know, and it's made them so much more aware of how the world really is, mm -hmm. and they value that. Some people don't value it and they're afraid of it, but others have the opposite reaction. It liberates their thinking, you know, and they start to think in new ways, and I've certainly said that this opens up a whole set of possibilities and new horizons. Know what it is that you know that you know that you know. Exactly. Not what other people tell you. You're supposed to know, or what they think you should know. And then Jesse adds his thanks for, you know, what you've done well, thank, this. thank him for, for thinking. Absolutely. Because that's what we need, more people who can think. Um, and then another question from Trev, um, which we, you looked at earlier on. Uh, how are you coping with all the flack that you get from both the mainstream media and the trolls on the internet? The truth is the truth. We just get on with it, don't yeah. we? You know, we get, get it doesn't matter what people think. No. It, that's a reflection on them, not on me. And, and, you know, privately we have conversations how we get fed up of all the same things being said over and over again, and we, we've done to death, in, you know, articles yeah. I've written, things that you've said yeah, on the it's radio. Like how, how can people be so weird to follow the same, into the same rut? But as you just said a minute ago, none of that changes what happened. We know yep. what happened, and other yeah. people can know what happened if they want to. Most of the building turned to dust. Yep. People yep. insulting me doesn't change that. No, no. You know, we, we'll get, de we'll have days where we feel fed up and, you know, we just don't want to do anything, but... The next day you think, well, you know, I'm well, over that now. You're all right. You just got to vent it and then you move vent, on. Exactly. Vent it and move on and you, you keep going. But it, it does become really surprising how the leaders of the PSYOPs, uh, or some of the leaders of the PSYOPs, uh, have such easy control over people, can easily divert them. 
Absolutely. That, that, that I, w I wouldn't have guessed. Yeah. Uh, next question comes from Jonathan. Uh, there's a whole bit of a list here. Um, if, is there any evidence of advanced technology at other 9-11 sites? So we mentioned this earlier. More generally, uh, how much have you looked at into the instance at Pent Pentagon, Shanksville, and any information about these elements of the attack which are not being talked about by the mainstream 9-11 truth movement? In other words, they're not talking about what happened to the World Trade Center, not really. Um, so are there things that you're aware of about the Pentagon, for example, that you've seen, you know, not talked about yeah, elsewhere? Yeah, well, the Pentagon in Shanksville, it, there is the same evidence if you look, but there's not nearly as much evidence. And there's very minute, you know, tiny detailed evidence galore at the World Trade Center. And you don't need to study 50 different things if you study one thing in depth. And if you know what happened at the World Trade Center, you're done. That's it. That's what I say to people. You've got so much video and so much witness testimony. Yeah. You, well, know. You, you, just, you don't need to water it down and divert no, people away from no. it. You know, and the only thing I'd add to that is that I think it is in your book, too. You've got a, one or two pictures of the toasted cars at the Pentagon, right? Am I, mm -hmm. am I right? So people can go and look at those, and that's on your website, too. Um, but, but once you study what happened at the World Trade Center, then you look at the Pentagon site and you go, oh, my gosh, it is the same thing. Okay. Um, yeah, and he asks about, is there any new information since publishing the book that about the destruction of the towers um, that has come to light since you've written your book? Um, in terms of advanced technology being used, do we have any new information about that? Well, I suppose I'd answer that, not that it was addressed to me, but um, we've talked about the link to cold fusion. I think there's a few bits and pieces that have come to light that that's strengthened well, that. Well, that's, yeah, it's just strengthened it, but I have that connection in there, like yeah, Mizuno's yeah. information and, and uh, um, I've forgotten his, his name from Texas A&M. Uh, John Bockris. Bockris. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's just, sadly no longer with us. Yeah, sadly, but... Mm. He has read my book. Absolutely, yes. That was, that was a beautiful uh, treasure. Um, and what are your plans for the future? That's a, that I get that asked that a lot. Um, you know, what, what sort, of, sort of things? I get asked a lot, what are you working on now? Are you working on anything? I know the answer to that, of yeah. course. Yeah, but, my uh, book is about uh, independent thinking and about critical thinking. And if somebody really goes through it carefully and can think on their own and don't need spoon feeding, you know, the, I guess I wonder when somebody asks me that if they're looking for okay, I'm I'm a blank slate. You know, write write the story on my mind because I can't think anymore. And and I <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound so harsh. I know, but, I know, I know. I know this is I'm, the problem. I'm, I mean, I'm just sort of exaggerating it a bit. But a lot of people look for like, well, what does the news say? What does this say? What does that say? What do you think is what I want people to end up with? Because if you constantly look for what other people say or do, you're, you're, you're vulnerable to whatever the news media wants to uh, railroad down your throat. Absolutely. and, and um, Or well, anybody else, or, or an alternative. I think, you know, what, one of the things that comes up is you've done this book, and then people attempt to say, when's the next book coming out? And really, this book isn't like that. It's not meant to be part of a series, particularly, is it? Right. I know that you, we, you know, we had to, you had mentioned yeah. you were thinking of doing another book, but there's more, just more data of the same, but this yeah. covers it. Yeah. So and this, more of the other would would water down this, would distract it, away from it. So, so you know, there's, there's, there's reasons maybe for looking at perhaps doing another book, but that's not. This book wasn't done like like any other book. Like was a halfway it? job. It wasn't a halfway no, job. No. 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 And it was meant to be uh, something which would change everyone's thinking once they'd seen it and exactly. change their. So how once you how do you do that with another book? How's that going to once once you know that this technology exists? How is another book going to change that? Perfect perfect question. You know, That's so, it, so, right so on that, target. So that that, that 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 then again, you don't need a second book really. Yeah, there's once, no, it's not new information. It's just more information that I have. Yeah. Stuff that I took out of this book that was. It was like, too, you know, just too much of the same thing. Like, that was hard for the toasted cars. I had a toasted car for every event, every occasion. And thinning down to just certain ones, that was tough to choose. That was the toughest job of all. Yeah. And I've got tons more of that, tons more of, you know, the other other uh, portions. But this tells the story. Absolutely. And and I think to sort of, to sort of try and close, really, you know, we are ordinary people, really. We have our own lives. We have things that we like to do in our own time. You know, 
we 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 are we are volunteers in this really we mm -hmm. we know we've not we're not elected we're not given money to write yeah, books we're, we're or not, do investigations it's not we uh, become millionaires over yeah you know and i mean i like to go out for walks i post stuff on facebook you know you like i mean i know you've become yeah. a, gig, a big chicken fan here haven't you over yeah. the last couple of years in, my garden. in your garden you do your garden and you do uh, some volunteer work don't you and yeah. stuff so people will know you for that as well in your local area um, so we've oh, got. There was a volunteer I mean, in my volunteer thing. There's there's somebody I ran into that uh, I forget how we got started talking. And I said, I need to read your book. Mm. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to um, talking with, with this person after they finish. You know, we we've essentially done what I think that you probably maybe feel the same as I do. We've done what we can do with this really. We don't, with the things as things are currently. We don't feel we can do. I don't feel I can do much more than I've done. I don't it, know about you. You can't improve on it. No, no. And it, it, as we were saying, nobody has refuted. It's you know, been out like 10 years, and, and, this information. And, and my architects and engineers are still saying, oh, we need a new investigation. And as, as we've said, who's going to do it? Oh, well, what's a new investigation? Yeah, this wasn't. That's the new investigation. It's the most comprehensive but investigation. But even if you want to take what's in Where Did the Towers Go, let's just say in a hypothetical situation, and put it into a government document of some kind, say they just wanted to literally, you know, tear the book out and stick it into a, a government you know, f uh, they wouldn't folder. want to do that. that no, that's exposing no. too many. Too much. Yeah, of course, of course. And so it's not going to happen, is it? It's going to be swept under, under the carpet. But if somebody wants a, a new investigation, read the book. Read the book. Pay the pay the forty dollars, and uh, away you yeah. go. You don't or need to get. Or you can get it from a library. Yeah, or get it from a library. library. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good way to do it. So I think we, you know, we didn't want to make this too long, did we? And um, I don't know if there's anything you want to add. We've covered a lot of a lot of different things, but but um, the important thing is once you go through the book, then you realize you, your eyes should be open and you start seeing the whole world differently. And you can look at a whole range of different topics with different analytical skills, which you've then gained. And you quit watching TV is another thing. Yes, yes, you do. As, as uh, what was it that Richard um, uh, Hall says? About Throw your TV out of the window. Yeah. <laughs> Throw your TV out of the window. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing because it's everything about it is just. If I met somebody's house and happened to see it, is you know it, it's so yeah. strange. Yeah, uh, so I think we'll probably just close by uh, thanking our hosts here, uh, oh, who've been absolutely wonderful. Well, thank uh, you, Andrew, for them. coming here for this event. Oh yeah, I mean it was my my great pleasure, of course, to see uh, the eclipse and spend some time. So I hope this is recorded properly. Be a shame if it hasn't. Yeah. And um, uh, we shall just say thank you to all the people that support us in what we do by you know giving out leaflets dvds telling friends sharing the information and, uh, and thinking honestly thinking honestly and thinking yeah. for themselves that's all we want them to do they yeah. don't need to thank us you know it's nice when they do but we're getting on with our lives we suggest you get on with yours oh how to uh, change the world that's an important thing to think about like what do we do to change the world what we need is more honest thinking yes if you all of us are honest always be truthful in everything you do that will change the world